from Merthyr on a world stage. Autographed. Oh, he's a lovely man. Got a real passion for the sport. When did you meet him? Oh, I've never met him. I made the mind found it and skip. Framed it for me. I mean, I could write to him, but celebrities don't bother other celebrities, you know? It's like an unwritten rule. I mean, you'd never see Phil the Power Taylor asking Sid Waddell for his autograph. Do you know what I mean? Ah! Oh! That's good. Right, it's all warmed up, so you might as well go on in. Do you often go on the sunbeds? Oh, I have a little top up for a match, do you know what I mean? Got a lucky best for your doesn't it? admitting now, but he got a bit tanorexic when we first bought it. He was on it three, sometimes four times a day. <laughs> ah, look at these. <laughs> God knows how he didn't get skin cancer. <laughs> He's got it under control now, but uh, I just keep those to remind him how bad it got. Uh, me and Andy, like Uncle and Neville before that fat cow came along. Big Sheila. Aye. Uh, I was his mentor, see? Taught him everything he knows and everything I know. Now, uh, he's been in decline since he left me. Well, the stats speak for themselves, don't they? Uh, no, thanks. His first wife was OK. She kept her nose out. But this one, she's his fucking puppet master. Do you think Big Sheila controls Andy? Big Sheila was a half-decent dance player herself, not good enough to be a pro mine. Now she's living the dream on Andy's achievements, riding along on his silk shirt tail, so to speak. He's to blame as well, mine. He lets her pull the strings. He should grow a pair of balls and show her the fucking door. Fancy a pint? Oh, I. Andy could have been up there with the greats if Big Sheila hadn't got her claws into him. You think Big Sheila's bad for Andy? Absolutely. I mean, she made him go and play an exhibition in Las Vegas when he should have been concentrating on the World Championships. Big Sheila, she loves all the glitz and glamour, boy. From what I can see, uh, Andy seems very happy with her. Ah, but I don't know what that is, don't you? What? Stockport syndrome. Stockport syndrome? Ah, you know. It's when the, when the prisoner starts thinking the jailer's their friend. Alwyn Coolidge is a bitter bastard. He's just had a bit of bad luck, that's all, have no, It's bad luck that he's brought on himself. I don't know why you even went to see him. I just wanted to build a comprehensive picture of Andy. <sighs> well, he's a jealous old junkie, so don't listen to a word he says because he's full of shit. She, you. Who are you talking about? Can we have a crack at him? No, 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 it's all right. He's just... Just an old buddy of mine, that's all. I always let Big Sheila go in and sort the business out before I make an entrance. I can't be doing all that money talk. Sheila, I'm doing my absolute best for you. I am not interested. I'm not interested in your best. I'm interested in what's good for Andy. He's a former world champion. I have a great respect for Andy. You know that. I don't hear much respect going on in this club right now, Rob. Just look at it. Just look at it. It's falling down. It's on his ass. It's not my response. There's bloody communities on his ass. Look at it. Do you think? Do you think I give a shit about this community? We're not going to be here much longer. We're moving to London. I know that. Look, my last stop. My final offer, 250. 250. Fuck off, it was a fucking grand. <laughs> I just want to throw some arrows. But Big Sheila's right, I'm a brand name. Like Nike, or Coca-Cola, or Spa. And there's people out there, right, who'll do anything to make some money out of me. All right? All right. Can you vote the graph, please? Yeah. What's it going? Have we got a pen? Why? Have we got a pen? Mm. 
Have you got any paper? No. What's his problem like? It happens all. People panic like when they come face to face with their heroes. The club secretary, Rod, reckons they've only sold 80 tickets, so he's trying to cut the prize money in half. <laughs> he's pulled this stunt before. What's the prize money supposed to be? 500, winner takes all. 250's a joke. What are you going to do now? Ah, no point biting my nose just to spite his face. I'll let Andy throw, but I've told him I want a rider and a guarantee for petrol. <laughs> Has Andy pulled the crowds in before? Well, he's a sure bet till a smoking ban. It's not just a dark stuff. The cabaret on a Sunday is dying on its ass. I mean, we only had 36 in last week for Shirley Brassy. Yeah. Shirley Brassy? Drag act. <laughs> Hilarious he is. Got a mouth on him like a docker. But when he sings, it's... Ah, he sounds like an angel. Yeah, Megan, tell him about Shirley Brassy. Oh, she's dead funny, she is. You know, if a blind man wandered in here, he'd swear he was my man. Who are you playing tonight, Andy? Roy Roy the Jungle Boy Evans. Roy Roy the Jungle Boy? Yeah, black player from Swansea. Mind you, he's the whitest black man you'd ever wish to meet. You know, not in a bad way. He's not like a black Albanian or something. What do you mean? I mean, he's not like a black man, you know. He's got no rhythm, and he's certainly not cool. I can't see how having no rhythm and not being cool makes him unlike a black man, Andy. Well, all the black men I know, all cool, can't half dance, and always dress smart when they go out. That's very stereotypical. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Roy's not very stereotypical, is he? I mean, dart is hardly a black man's sport, is it? And then, is a racialism. Racialism? Yeah. I mean, it can be quite offensive, actually. I played this darts match with him once in Wrexham, exhibition, and we went for a few drinks after. And, um, you know, there's some black lads in there. So some of the stuff he said was really racialist. Why would he do that? I don't know. Probably just jealous. He's not like them, I suppose. But you said he's black. Yeah. Well, that doesn't mean he can dance, then he's cool, is it? Did you confront him about his racism? Yeah, I did, actually. But he reckons he can't be racist because he's black. But I said to him, I said, look, you know, just because you're a black man doesn't mean you can't be racist about other black people. And what was his response? He just said, like, you know, that when he calls other black lads the N-word, that, you know, they don't mind. Ah, I get it. You see, Andy, a lot of black guys call each other the N-word. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying, isn't it? You know? Racialism is everywhere. You know, I mean, I wouldn't dream of calling somebody the N-word if I was black. Are you okay, Andy? Are you nervous about tonight? You look a bit... Oh, no, I'm not feeling 100%. Do me a favour. Go back, squeeze player, will you? I'm sorry? I've got some trap wind. Give me back a squeeze player. Please. Oh, but a trapped wind, is it? Haunts him, it does. <laughs> yeah, he said. Come in, Emily. Come on. Oh, let's get it out. Right. It's no good, she. Just keep at it. I don't know the cleat ops. Oh, he followed through big time in cleat ops once. <laughs> I don't want it on.